So our next speaker is Michael Mbuthia, uh, who's the Regional Director for East Africa from Africa Nenda. Michael, please take it away. Um, I think when I was asked to do this presentation, um, I tried to pick a picture that would instinctively paint uh, the scenario that you're in currently. So in Africa right now, we have 400 million adults who still ac lack access to financial accounts. So everyone has a phone, right? We have Wi-Fi, right? Can everyone type Ogadugu hard labor? And then tell me the photos that come out. So I'll give you a context. This photo is from January 29th. Can you guess? 2022. So these women work in mines. It's a granite mine, so they work the whole day. You know, it's back-breaking work. And then thereafter, they have to line up for pay. And this is in year 2022. And this is the world that we live in now. So if you look at life um, and the cycle of life that you're in, every one of us here is in a certain box in that circle. Apart from birth, if you're all born now, I guess would not be here. But we've passed through birth, maybe education, and some of us, congratulations, Karen. I, I believe Karen got married at some point. Um, and then we, we go into working life, and then we go into supporting others, our parents, our siblings. And then we move on to assets where we acquire assets, we insure them. And then we start dealing with emergencies because our parents are aging, and we have to borrow to buy a new house, to take children to school, and then eventually we become old. And what happens? We go into pensions, right? And the cycle continues, and our grandchildren hop onto this wheel. Having said that, I will pause and take one minute of my time to recognize one very important person who I learned a lot from when we were implementing the project in Kigali, and that's uh, John Karamuka. Um, he was very humble, and I think we need to uh, clap for him because Rwanda has just launched their national payment interoperable system, and John was the architect of it. Uh, so let's give him a clap, Mr. Karamuka. I will give the second uh, prop after two more slides. So if you look at traditional versus modern payments, so what used to happen before is that you'd go over a counter, withdraw money, and then you'd have a passbook, and they would write your balances, and then eventually it migrated to mobile payments, ATM payments, and then to uh, eventually m -Pesas and the rest. But the use cases are still the same. My mom wants to go to the branch to withdraw money. She's retired, and that's her, the highlight of a, of a day, because she wakes up, takes a shower, puts on her favorite dress, and tells you she's going to the bank, right? That's a lifestyle for her. She has the time. And what she says is that the branch manager is a friend, so she's going to say hi to a friend. She's not going to bank, right? It's a friend. And the watchman who uh, opens the door for her comes from her village, so she also has to say hi to them. But in the same bank, we have young adults who, like us, don't want to go to the branch, right? We want everything online. We want everything to be done on mobile or internet banking, and that's the world that we're in, that we have traditional payments and we have modern payments, but they're all serving different subsets of customers. So about a decade ago, I mean, you, you'd, you'd, you'd spend a day without cash, you know? And uh, we've moved from card payments in the 1980s. We've gone to online payments. We've gone 21st century, we have mobile payments. Now we have P2P payments and retail payments. But the state of financial inclusion reflects the first slide that was projected here. As of 2020, the total number of financially excluded adults in Africa stood at 395, almost close to the 4 million, 400 million that you're talking about. And yet, we're in 2022. So what are the key challenges that were cited? Number one, long distance to financial services access point. So I trust Jackie, I, I mean the same group with Jackie, that uh, there is a challenge because if that lady has to work in the mine and then cash their, product, uh, cash their bank in a bank and then during the day they have to go and get cash out from an ATM, that's a challenge. Prohibitive costs, um, limited access to mobile phones, lack of trust in financial institutions, not having enough money, 
to, to do all this transaction in adequate literacy skills. I simply don't know how to use mobile banking. But let's look at the state of payments technology in Africa because we've looked at the challenges, but let's look at what is happening in Africa right now. And, and I'm glad to have seen uh, the, the, the Honorable Deputy uh, Governor of Sierra Leone and mentioned about the upcoming national payments that they're doing. But if you look at these maps, we've categorized them under two buckets, national payment system and regional cross-border. So if you look at national cross-border payments, the, the countries colored in green, are the ones that are developing interoperable instant payments. You'll see that Rwanda is in blue, right? Yeah, it's in blue. But right now it should be in orange because they've already launched. And the countries that are in or uh, orange are the ones that have launched. If you look at the regional cross-border, you find that there are blocks like Wemu, EAC, e EAC is the East African community, SADAC and Comesa. But this picture tells us a very fundamental issue. When I leave Kenya, I use my ESC passport, right? Uh, I don't have to apply for a visa. It takes me roughly less than one hour and a few minutes from Kenya to Rwanda. But if I make payment from Kenya to Rwanda, it takes longer because the ease of travel across borders is easier, is easier but the ease of payment has not been made easy. And it cuts across all the countries that you're talking about, whether I'm traveling to Uganda, Tanzania, and the rest. So we need to automate uh, our, our systems. So why is digital financial inclusion important? Uh, important? Number one, consumer perspective, more convenient, efficient services, and from a service provider adoption, high transaction volumes, greater velocity of money, there's more churn in the ecosystem creating a value proposition. And for regulators, expensive cash, Cash is expensive, literally. Uh, and, and, and for that, I think there's a, a case for digitizing. I'll skip the few slides and I'll focus on one slide that I want to take away, which the governor of uh, Sierra Leone mentioned. Now, this is a complete C-tier model for regional and national payments. You have your local um, institutional payments, your credit, your uh, mobile money operators, but they can only operate at a national level. But you need to have a national switch to aggregate all of them so that the people who are doing mobile financial services can be aggregated into a country national switch. And that's what Rwanda has done. That's what Kenya has done. That is what Ethiopia has done. So all the countries are moving in this direction. And once you do that, then it enables you to go into cross-border payments which is a regional switch. And I see my time is up, uh, so I'll speak a bit about Africa Nenda. We are a company funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, incubated by Rockefeller Philanthropy Advisors, and what we actually do is advocate for DB, D, DPGs, which is open loop systems, available without minimal or very, um, uh, you know, very cost effective licenses. We advocate for real time, push payments that removes the risk and cost inherent to batch processing. We advocate for systems that, are governan that governance is on the same day settlement, there is fairness and equalness among amongst the participants. And the oper we advocate for systems that are on a cost recovery basis. And also we advocate for shared infrastructure. So I will end there, I think my time is up, there was a lot more, so this is the last slide that I have, but allow me to recognize one more group it is often not, uh, you know, uh, having two professors that uh, supervised you. So I'd, write, I'd like to recognize Professor Abade from Nairobi University. Uh, please appreciate Abade. He supervised me for my masters. Uh, so thank you, Prof. We honor you. And I'd also like to honor Prof. Chigona. So when I was done with my masters uh, at UC at uh, Nairobi University, Prof. Chigona took off. And, uh, and did a good job at UCT where we're doing a PhD. So we honor you and all the professors in the room who are shaping careers and uh, developing uh, you know, sustainable infrastructure, we all honor you. Thank you.